All right, so after about a month of waiting, I finally received my brand new MacBook Pro 14 inch. So I wanted to post a video just in regards to my first impressions of unboxing and using the device over the last week or so. Just to give a bit of context, I had ordered pretty much the base 14 inch model, all but with just slightly more storage at one terabyte instead of 512 gigabytes, and with the faster charging 96 watt power adapter as opposed to the standard 67 watt one. This all came in for an eye-watering 3,069 Australian dollars. If I think, however, this is a worthwhile purchase, I'll be upgrading from my 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro, which I had purchased with the same amount of memory and storage for almost $500 less. As such, my first impressions will be essentially coming from that perspective. Is the MacBook Pro 14-inch a worthwhile upgrade? So jumping straight in, let's start with the unboxing experience. As always, Apple manages to offer a very satisfying experience in this regard. It's very minimalist and holding true with their goal in maintaining environmentally sustainable packaging. Almost all of it is paper-based with the only exception being the shrink wrap around the box. And like with all Apple products, the packaging is always so clean and it always makes you not want to unpackage any of it to begin with. But when you do, what you get is pretty much the usuals with some notable exceptions being a braided USB-C to MagSafe cable and the very pro dark gray Apple stickers. Very nice, but I wouldn't expect anything less out of this whole experience given the fact that you are paying upwards of 3000 Australian dollars. Taking out the MacBook Pro 14 inch from its snug fit paper packaging, the first thing that came to my mind was, boy, does this feel premium. So comparing my M1 13 inch MacBook Pro with the new 14 inch model, the most immediately noticeable thing is the more rounded edges and the boxier design of that classic aluminum unibody chassis. It's very reminiscent of the old school PowerBook G4 notebooks. And whilst the M1 13 inch is certainly no slouch when it comes to build quality, the rounded edges of this new 14 inch makes it feel ever so slightly more premium, probably due to the manufacturing process required to smoothly carve those edges out. The 14 inch looks physically thicker than the 13 inch, but that's due to the fact that its thickness is consistent all the way through, allowing for more space to fit the battery components and fans. In actual fact, the thickness is equal between the models, but the 13 inch tapers at the edges more aggressively and has smaller feet, thus the apparent difference. The weight difference I think is fairly minimal at only around 220 grams, but if you're an absolute stickler for portability, then the MacBook Air may be a better fit for you. For me, I think the 14 inch form factor is a sweet spot for portability, display size and power overall. Other design changes include the newly engraved MacBook Pro text on the bottom of the chassis, which I think looks very aesthetic. And we can't go without mentioning the new keyboard deck. Two major things here. Firstly, the touch bar is dead. Yes, that's right. Apple finally listened. Don't get me wrong. The touch bar had its conveniences. I quite enjoyed scrubbing through footage and music with it, and I didn't mind being able to touch and drag to change things like brightness and sound. But I don't think Anything beats the satisfaction of having physical function row keys. They are plush, large, tactile in the Pro 14 inch, and just what the doctor ordered. The one only gripe that I have is the lack of keyboard brightness adjustments, although there are workarounds using remapping tools. Now, the second change to the keyboard is the new black backdrop to the keyboard deck. Um, Aesthetically, it's a nice change and it looks a bit more professional, but I don't think many people would have cared if they just left the deck as is. It's certainly not a game changer. Usability otherwise is very similar, if not the same as my MacBook Pro 13 inch in both typing comfort and speed. The same goes to the touchpad, which is practically the same size between the two models, although I have found that the haptic feedback on the 14 inch is just ever so slightly more heavier, if that makes any sense. It just feels like a more realistic and deeper click than the 13 inch model. Um, like the touch bar, Apple listened to their consumers and brought back not only the SD card slot, but also MagSafe and a HDMI port. Without a doubt, this was one of the most exciting announcements for the new MacBook Pros in my opinion. I can't tell you how many times I've been caught out in a situation without my USB-C adapter, needing to transfer something from my camera to the MacBook or needing to hook my Mac up to an external display. 
Just be aware that the HDMI port is only 2.0 certified, not 2.1, which is a bit of a bummer if you're looking to hook it up to an external 4K 120Hz display. But the SD card slot works like a charm. And whilst I don't have super fast cards, I was able to transfer roughly around two gigabytes of video files in around one minute for 17 seconds. Other than that, the Mac also comes with three Thunderbolt 4 capable USB-C ports, which are also charging capable. Grateful if you want to just lug around a USB-C charger for all your devices. Speaking of charging, let's talk about the return of MagSafe. I myself was never really a diehard fan of MagSafe. I was a little sad to see it go. However, I did quickly get used to the conveniences of USB-C as it was a standard used by the majority of my other electronics. With the return of MagSafe, I'm honestly a bit torn about whether to bring the MagSafe cable or a standard USB-C cable if I were to go traveling. Regardless of what decision I make, the new and improved MagSafe here is much stronger than the predecessor, which makes it less easy to inadvertently knock off when you're, say, lying in bed, for example. It also means that the safety side of MagSafe is ever so slightly compromised due to those stronger magnets, although I'm sure it will save you in the majority of situations. Overall, it's definitely a positive feature to have. Charging times with the upgraded 96 watt power adapter got me fully charged from 5% to 100% in under one hour, 45 minutes. For the 14 inch model, this can be achieved through either the use of the USB-C ports or the MagSafe port, which is a major plus, that flexibility is great. But just keep in mind, the base model comes with the 67 watt power adapter. And so you will need to spend an extra $30 to get that fast charging. I plan to do some testing a little bit further between the differences in charging time, comparing between the new 97 watt power adapter with my older MacBook Pro chargers to see if the upgrade is worth it or not. So stay tuned for that one. Um, when it comes to the screen, Apple made some significant upgrades that differentiates the new 14 inch and 16 inch models from the current 13 inch models. The most obvious is of course that notch. And Yes, like many other YouTubers have pointed out, it seems excessively large for the purpose of housing a new and improved 1080p webcam alone. Coming from a previous Dell XPS 13 inch, I would have loved to see facial recognition implemented into the notch. It is by far the most convenient way of logging into a laptop, but it's not here. Other than that though, the notch is actually not significantly intrusive. It blends into the settings bar, which otherwise would be below the top bezel. Because of that, you don't actually notice it for content consumption or work because it physically rests in a spot that for the vast majority of people would be otherwise dead screen real estate. The remaining bezels of the MacBook screen have also shrunken, increasing the screen to body ratio. Though, I still would have liked to see even thinner bezels akin to the infinity displays of the Dell XPS models, especially when it comes to that bottom chin. But to be fair, I guess it does have something to do with the fact that Apple has integrated their new Pro XDR displays into the new 14 inch and 16 inch models. On paper, these screens sound absolutely beast. Mini LED, adaptive refresh rate up to 120 Hertz, HDR certified for up to 1000 nits of sustained brightness and 1600 nits of peak brightness. This was one of the major reasons for me wanting to upgrade from the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Interestingly enough, however, in day to day use, browsing the web, watching YouTube, editing documents, the differences between models are more subtle than I expected. The 14 inch MacBook tends to be only ever so slightly brighter with non HDR content and colors look just as accurate between the two. Where the 14 inch pulls ahead is in A, black levels, which are much darker and in B, brightness levels when viewing HDR content. Together, these add to a much more immersive viewing experience in terms of the higher 120Hz refresh rate, I actually found the difference to be hard to perceive on a day-to-day -day basis. I think there is a much greater impact of having higher refresh rates on smartphones because you often dynamically are switching between and scrolling between apps. On a laptop, I spend a lot of time on static images such as Word documents or videos. So that visual impact of an increased refresh rate is just not so apparent. And where it would be apparent, i.e. high FPS gaming, the experience is hampered by the lack of supported titles in Mac OS. Surprisingly, I would say that I found greater utility in the extra screen real estate afforded by the 14 inch model than the actual upgrades to brightness and higher refresh rate. Overall, 
I would not base an upgrade to the 14 inch model solely on the, on the display unless you absolutely need it for professional use. Although the black levels of mini LED is very hard to pass off. Moving on to speakers. On the new 14 inch model, they are incredible. And that's coming from the 13 inch model, which were already quite good to start. The 14 inch allows for richer mids and much more present bass. It's definitely a huge step up in this regard. I haven't thoroughly tested performance yet, but I have no doubt it will hold up to my daily use of casual photo and video editing. Thus far, the new M1 Pro chip hasn't had any hiccups. A quick test of export times of a 14 minute 4K clip from Final Cut demonstrated that the base M1 Pro managed to export it two and a half minutes faster than the M1 of my 13 inch, which contextually equates to about a quarter less of the total export time. It's not mind blowing, but still impressive given the M1 had such amazing performance to begin with. The most noticeable improvement I believe will be in the graphics department, but as you will hear me mention time and time again, for someone like me who mainly does Word, Excel documents, web browsing, and photo video editing, those performance gains will not be noticeable, at least not in the current state of Mac OS where AAA gaming is out of the question. But just as a quick aside, I have managed to get Genshin Impact up and running on both the 14 inch and 13 inch models. And whilst I don't have an FPS counter, both run at least to my perceivable eye greater than 60 FPS. Hopefully I'll be able to get a version that will run at 120 uh, frames per second because that on the 14 inch model will be mwah, chef's kisses. All right, so battery life. Thus far, it has been a little bit underwhelming having come from the 13 inch MacBook Pro. The 14 inch model comes with a fairly sized up 70 watt battery as opposed to the 58.2 watt battery of the 13 inch model. However, the impact of the new screen as well as the new M1 Pro processor hampers the longevity on the 14 inch model. I was averaging about four hours of screen on time over the last few days, which don't get me wrong, is still great considering the tech that this packs in. However, coming from the 13 inch model where I was getting up to eight hours of screen on time, it's a, it's a little underwhelming. I will certainly do some more testing controlled for the final review as I'm probably using the 14 inch MacBook a little bit more heavily than usual due to the fact that it's so, so brand new and shiny. So overall, should you buy the new 14 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook? Keep in mind that these are just preliminary thoughts for now, but in saying that, I think like all things, the question is very situational dependent. If you currently own an M1 MacBook, whether it be the Air or the Pro, and you don't feel like you need increased performance either in a professional capacity or in casual use, stick with what you have. The 14-inch MacBook's main offering relies, I think, on increased performance capabilities from the M1 Pro and Max processors, whilst the screen, the design, and the ports are just, they're the icing on the cake. Overall, it's not worth the extra dollars on an otherwise very capable M1 series. Just don't forget that in particular, you are getting better portability and battery life on the 13 inch models, which arguably is more important for a lot of people out there than the other upgrades. And all of this at a cheaper cost, at a difference of 1,500 Australian dollars between the base model Air and the 14 inch base model alone. This advice therefore extends to the majority of people who are looking to upgrade to a new MacBook. The M1 series will be more than enough for 95% of people out there and for a better price. The base M1 processor is already a very capable chip. I've been editing 4K footage on my 13 inch model for the last year and can safely say it's been an absolute dream to work on. Plus, I know I keep mentioning it, but for a very important reason, longer battery life is just so much more convenient for the majority out there, particularly if you're a student or you like to travel. If however, you do need the horsepower and you make a living out of it, either you're in media production or app development, then these new 14 inch and 16 inch MacBooks may just be your answer. As for me, I think the tech enthusiast in me is very much tempted by the new 14 inch model because 
I like the slightly larger design. I'm sick of using dongles and the mini LED screen gives such amazing black levels. However, the pragmatic side of me is screaming out that my current 13 inch M1 model is more than capable of delivering the power I need. Plus the screen is already pretty good to start with. Plus I've gotten used to having a dongle around. Plus I'm getting better battery life and all for a cheaper price. On that note, I'm going to leave it as is and I'll get back to you on my final decision in my full review. So make sure to subscribe for that one. In the meantime, leave a like and let me know your thoughts. Are you also tempted by the release of these new models? Or did you go for a M1 MacBook? Or have you just stuck with Windows? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to see them all. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.